Welcome back to episode 55 of the People's Guide to Publishing. I am your host, Joe Beal, the artistic publisher, founder, and CEO of Microcosm. I'm Ellie Blue. I'm the marketing and editorial director here at Microcosm. And this week we are going to answer a fan question. How do I structure my profit and loss statement, specifically when I am planning a Kickstarter project to launch the book? So we realized, deeply embarrassingly, that we had not actually created a profit and loss outline in previous episodes. So profit and loss, otherwise known as P&L, is a tool that many publishers use and all should all should use really at the acquisitions phase before you sign the contract to tell you is this a good idea to publish this book or not will it pencil out will i break even will i lose money will i make money will the author make money predicting the outcome with numbers but not in like the way that people lie with global economics you're actually doing sort of the opposite where you're trying to say what is the most likely outcome of publishing this book so what are the kinds of things that you look at in a PNL statement. And we'll share a link when we post the episode to a sample PNL statement that you can look at and even copy and use for yourself. Number one, the cost of the content, which is normally like, do you, like, what is the author's advance? What is the author's royalty? What is the cost, if any, of, you know, things like licensed images, illustration, typesetting, layout, cover design, things that, and to make the book be truly comparable to the other books next to it on the shelf. But then there's also the income or the potential income, which is a little harder to calculate. Not really, actually. Oh, tell me more. So when you're making your P&L, you want to find three other books from comparably sized presses to your own, that, and the books that would be books that people would buy instead of or in addition to your book. And with the help of magical services like what we used to call BookScan and is now called awkwardly NPD Decision Key, you can look up the actual sales of those books and then work backwards to see what the likely sales of your book would be. And then you can use a fascinating piece of religion called math to take the cover price of the book, multiply it by those sales, subtract the author's royalty and all of your expenses to create the feasible and most likely outcomes of publishing that book. Wow. I'm daunted. <laughs> it's really not that bad. I can do it in my head now. What if you guess wrong, though? You, it's not guessing. See, this is the beauty of it. You are taking the most conservative data you can find mm -hmm. and creating the outcome that way. And this, if you do that, that means that if the book does better than that, it's gravy. If the book does not do better than that, you knew what was going to happen. You knew the risks. And if you lied to yourself, well, you got no one else to blame. So has there been a time when like, you've done a P&L for a book and then decided not to publish the book? Yeah. Oh, hundreds of times, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like most submissions. And can you like give an example of like what you predicted would go wrong? So it's like anything else. A P&L is just a way to use statistics to make your point. So if, you know, we, we've gotten it pitched to us many times, like doing a book about kombucha, and we haven't done those books because there's literally hundreds of books. So are there times when uh, you've done the p &L and it's made you change the production values of a book? Oh, absolutely. I mean, usually if you do the p &L and it's infeasible, you kill the book. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do not publish the book, and so ideally you would do the P&L before you have, like, before you tell the author that you are going to publish the book and make a contract and all that. But it's, there are times, oddly enough, where you do the P&L and you're like, oh, when you look at the comps and you're like, oh, we can actually sell this book for $2 more than we thought we could. Or conversely, if you're doing things out of order, you find out that young adult fiction sells for nine ninety five, and it needs to be 256 pages so your P&L is really really dicey because you have to pay $1.50 per copy to the printer and you're only getting three seventy five a copy that you have to split between the printer, the author, yourself, your existing inventory and you're stuck you know so you either have to price high which will rub bookstores wrong because they're accustomed to a 995 paperback or 
you can eat it and pray to math that your book sells well enough that you know you're you can get by on your 30 cents or so per copy and then sometimes we like ended up publishing the book as a hardcover like a 15 or 20 dollar hardcover instead of a 10 dollar 12 dollar paperback mm -hmm. and uh, and that's comes into comps again mm -hmm. you want really want to do what the competition is doing right. they've done the homework so you don't have to so if everybody's book about chocolate is 1995 and hardcover and contains full color photographs that's what yours should look like too the only concern then is you have to look deeply into is are there too many books in print already that you it will be impossible for you to break in or is there something that distinguishes your book from the pack which is also important but if all the other books are hardcover then the only reason yours should be paperback is that if you can extremely price bust, meaning like making the book nine ninety five when all the other books are nineteen ninety five, because it'll create a different kind of customer. It'll create a different kind of placement in stores. It'll sell a lot better in gift stores. It'll just you know have a different kind of life than it would as part of a very crowded pack. So the question was about Kickstarter and how do you take Kickstarter into account when you're making a PNL? The same way as you take everything else into account. So on my PL, which maybe looks like nobody else's PL, I have what I consider the trade market. So I have predictive sales based on the NPD book scan numbers that from the comps, you know. So if every other book sold five thousand five hundred copies as an average of the three, then I would guess that ours would sell five thousand five hundred copies. And that we would likely get 10% of those returned because you really want and 20% is probably more likely but we tend to be in the uh, our returns tend to be closer now to about 2 to 3% of books sold but on the other hand you know you remember you want your PL to be conservative it's a worst case scenario you know maybe not worst case but most likely scenario and so we have a next line that is the direct market, meaning like who, and, and it's confusing because in publishing, direct market normally means comic book stores, but in this case, we mean it literally, direct market selling to the readers. And so that has a different price per copy, that has a different amount per book, there are zero returns, you know, you don't have to deal with any of that. So that's just a straight mathematical, you know, that's a, like a multiplication problem. And you add that to your trade sales, you subtract your returns, those are your sales, and that'll help, you know, the Kickstarter sales obviously are just like nice, it's not even the icing, it's the cake, you know, the Kickstarter sales are often just as much as the trade sales, even if there's five times as many of them, because the, they pay more per copy, they never come back, there's no guesswork to be done, you know, and so... With that, you know, we handle those direct sales the same way we do every other copy of the book sold. It's like the author gets a percentage royalty, done deal, nothing to talk about, nothing to... You, you don't want to end up in a situation where something that the publisher does requires getting the author to sign an addendum on their contract or having to go back to the drawing board because the author normally interprets that as they have room to negotiate when you don't ever have room to renegotiate because your margins are usually a third to a fifth of what their income is from the book. So you have to just have your ducks in a row before you get to that point. The author should get a consistent royalty across all platforms other than ebook. They should get a higher one on ebook and, you know, if you have licensing and such. Especially if you communicate clearly what your book is and what benefit it has to the reader. Mm -hmm. But that's a different episode <laughs> yes and like kind of every episode thanks for joining us once again please send your questions to podcast at microcosmpublishing.com so we can answer them on future episodes and please give us five stars on itunes and everywhere else that podcasts are reviewed you can find us on the internet at microcosm.pub on twitter at microcosm on facebook at microcosm publishing on Instagram at microcosm underscore pub. And here in Portland, Oregon on North Williams Avenue. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week.